And you can't fight back unless you're educated. You have to know what you're dealing with. And then you have to know your legal rights, uh, your civil rights, your constitutional rights. And civil rights are not just for racial and ethnic minorities. They're for every American. And we have to fight not just for our children. You may have pulled your children out and put them in a, a, a private school that you know is, hasn't been taken over, or you may be homeschooling, you're paying taxes, you need to fight for everyone's child. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon Lewis, founder of the Tennessee Conservative, the Volunteers State's largest conservative news alternative. Today, we are joined by Dr. Carol Swain to discuss state government education in Tennessee, the divisive and harmful concepts that are found in many of these institutions, and how we can work toward delivering real results for parents and students in our state. Dr. Carol Swain is an award winning political scientist and former tenured professor at Princeton and Vanderbilt universities. She has served on the Tennessee Advisory Committee to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the 1776 Commission. Swain is a distinguished senior fellow for the Constitutional Studies Department at the Tennessee Public Policy Foundation and serves as an educational advisor for American Cornerstone Institute founded by Dr. Ben Carson. She is the author of 11 books, including the bestseller, Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House. Carol has been published in the New York Times, Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal, and has appeared on ABC's Headline News, the BBC, CNN, and Fox News. Dr. Swain operates a nonprofit, Be the People News, and her businesses and enterprises include a Brentwood-based Carol Swain's Real Unity Training Solutions. Dr. Swain, welcome to the program. I'm glad to have you. Thank you, uh, Brandon, and thank you for all the great work that you're doing with the Tennessee uh, Conservative. We do need uh, conservative media outlets, and people of Tennessee, if it's going to stay a red state, then it's important for the citizens to know what's taking place. Well, you're very kind. Well, we've only got two, so if you don't like mine, your, your options are already very thin. <laughs> So I, I, drove, I drove through Brentwood. It had been the first time in a few decades. I, I met, uh, met with a gentleman from the uh, Epoch Times over there and uh, for lunch. Um, and it is a beautiful community. It's, it's amazing. It's just like miles and miles and miles of mansions. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you met with Roger Simon. He is a fantastic guy. Uh, learned a lot from him. Uh, really sweet gentleman. Uh, enjoyed talking to him. Didn't really talk about politics very much. It was just all He's a great guy. I love him. And, um, and you know, Michael Leahy, you all are doing uh, work that complement each other. And um, I just hope that people will support it because you can't take being a red state for granted. No, you certainly can't. And sometimes you, just because you've got a bunch of Republicans doesn't mean that, that you're in a red state. Uh, depends on what happens. So let's right. get right into it. Uh, Tennessee recently passed a law that banned, and put a little, some quotation marks around that, CRT in the schools. But there's been a serious problem in getting uh, our government to root it out in other harmful concepts in our state, um, even when they have documented and reported instances of it sent up to uh, Penny Schwinn, who's the director of education. It gets sent up there. Uh, two of them that have been sent up recently that were pretty ironclad got dismissed on the technicality as if we should be focused yeah. on the kids, not the technicalities. Uh, but walk our listeners through the law and the challenges that it proposes and faces. Well, first of all, a CRT stands for critical race theory. And there's been a lot of focus in the last couple of years on critical race theory, but I would argue that, uh, uh, that CRT is not the most dangerous critical theory that's in the schools and they're all Marxist based. And so this law that was passed um, in 2021 was to prohibit certain concepts. And so the law identifies, I think, 14 areas, and it's not just uh, race. Uh, there are other ways that our children are being harmed by this Marxist ideology. And so I'm going to read a little bit of, of the prohibitive, prohibited concepts. Um, they very wisely did not pass a law banning CRT, because uh, what the political left does is that they play word games. 
And so if you uh, ban CRT, uh, the, anyone that's followed it knows that they immediately come back and say, CRT, we're not doing CRT. We're doing culturally sensitive learning. We're doing uh, educational equity. Uh, we're doing civil rights, but they're still doing the same thing. And so these prohibited, prohibited concepts, uh, here's one, that one race or sex is inherently superior to another race or sex. Um, that, I'm skipping down to another one, that an individual should be discriminated against or receive adverse treatment because of the individual's race or sex, uh, that a meritocracy is inherently racist or sexist or designed by a particular race or sex to oppress members of another race or sex. And with critical race theory, pretty much it argues that uh, America is a racist country, it's racism in its DNA, that it was founded by white people who are the oppressors to oppress racial and ethnic minorities, that all minorities are victims. And it argues that only white people can be racist and that white people have to engage in the permanent work of being anti-racist. And whatever any other group does, it's not racist. So this law, the prohibited prohibited concepts law uh, was designed to address, you know, many different areas that, that is harmful to our children. Uh, so in some of these areas that are prohibited by the law is that the rule of law does not exist, but instead is a series of power relationships and struggles among racial or, or other groups that government should deny to any person within the government's jurisdiction the equal protection of the law, all of that's prohibited, prohibited. I'm having trouble with that. Uh, you say you're from Alabama, where well, I'm from Southwestern Virginia and, uh, and my folks weren't educated. So I struggle with some of these words, but these prohibited concepts uh, go beyond CRT. And so the Tennessee legislature uh, wisely passed this law in 2021 and they became one of 36 states across the country so far that have passed laws. And what has happened is that it doesn't matter very much that we pass the law because they found ways to e evade it. And uh, you referred to uh, the fact that a couple of cases have gone up, you know, to the uh, with complaints. The complaints have been dismissed. And the original bill was authored by Representative John Reagan of Oak Hill. And so the law has been passed. It was a wonderful thing passing it. It was the right thing to do, but the implementation hasn't taken place. No, sadly, it hasn't. Um, you know, it, when things have to run through the Department of Education up in Nashville, which has been the author of some pretty amazing things. I don't know if you were around when Penny Schwinn uh, pushed out that that universal child wellness check. Uh, you should get your hands on that document where a state employee was going to come, whether your kids were in public school or not. Oh, I remember. Oh, amazing. And so and there's you could you could spend the whole program talking about the things that have come out of that department under her leadership. Uh, Bill Lee defends her as being an exceptional, upstanding conservative and aligned with Tennessee values. And that so is, that is totally ridiculous. And I don't know why she's in that position. Um, you know, there are rumors, uh, you know, that that the, maybe this is not a rumor. Maybe, you know, the answer. Did Bill Gates give money to Tennessee for education? And is she uh, somehow connected to Gates or is this just all, a rumor? All I know, and I, I try not to truck in hearsay. Right. Um, I just I'm just try trying to figure to, it out. I have heard uh, we have received a, a, a visit from Mr. Gates in the governor's mansion. I don't have any verification of that, um, but he does not have the best interest of Tennessee kids in mind, and nor does he align with Tennessee values and the majority of what he has done uh, philanthropically or otherwise. And so it, we just, we need somebody else to be the, the cop on this. It can't be the people you can't, you can't put the criminals in, in charge of the jails right. and you can't put Marxist leaning, uh, educational, uh, folks in, in charge of, of rooting out Marxism in the schools. But apparently, uh, that's the, there's some things well, I mean, can do. Yeah. Well, Penny Swim, I think is very uh, dangerous when, because she doesn't understand and the fact that 
um, Governor Bill Lee would protect her, I find it very disturbing. And um, so the prohibited concepts, we passed a law, that's great, we joined 36 other states, but they have other ways to uh, uh, evade the law and avoid implementation. And there are many back doors, such as social, social emotional learning that's in many of the schools. Well, you're you're right on. I got I, I get emails and 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 text messages and Facebook messages ad infinitum of people pointing out these concepts being taught in the schools, and they're frustrated because everyone thinks, okay, this thing has has been enacted, so therefore now we're safe. Which leads me to my next question, uh, and hopefully you can help some Tennessee school boards. Uh, up until recently, there was a monopoly in Tennessee when it came to training school board members right. how to do their job. Uh, that monopoly largely had the interest of perpetuating the status quo in government education, uh, even when it's not in the best interest of parents and students. So talk about the laws uh, governing how school boards are trained and a recent development uh, that may bring some hope to educating board members who want to do the right thing by the kids and parents in Tennessee. Well, first of all, I would uh, you know encourage people that if you don't know Representative John Reagan from Oak Hill, that you should get to know him because he was instrumental in the passage of a bill that actually makes, it, it opened it up uh, to more than a monopoly when it comes to training school board members. And so um, I'm going to read a little bit about from this paper. Uh, this, the state law requires all school board members to have annual training. And up until recently, uh, that was the Tennessee School Boards Association that was the single provider. And so they're sort of in bed with the Tennessee Department of Education. They tend to be more left. But the law made it possible for other organizations to apply to offer school board training. And I am pleased to announce to everyone that um, in 2020, I founded an organization. At the time, it was called uh, Unity Training Solutions. Uh, we've changed the name. Uh, but my organization applied and it is approved to do school board training. We'll be doing some of that uh, this fall. But I changed the name from Unity Training Solutions to Carol Swain's Real, R E A L, capital letters, Unity Training Solutions, because there were like 500 um, patents pending for Unity Training. And when you actually looked at the applications, they were just pushing DEI and CRT and they're calling it unity training. And so if you watch progressives, the political left, they change the meanings of words and they're always playing word games. They're always, uh, they're one step ahead of conservatives. And I actually read, and I don't have a source in front of me that they have organizations that are pretty much, they monitor conservatives and conservative legislation and they focus on coming up with ways to avoid, uh, to evade, you know, the implementation. And so like, if we're focused on CRT or, or um, SEL, they are working uh, to find uh, other organizations that would do the exact same thing or bring in certain partners uh, and say that, um, uh, because these groups say that this is a great program, it must be a great program. And social emotional learning, uh, that has been the back door for CRT, as well as pornography to get into the schools through programs like Great Minds and in uh, Williamson County, it's called Wit and Wisdom. Uh, they have uh, books on suicide ideations. Uh, books that are really pushing uh, the critical race theory, the critical queer theory, the transgenderism. Uh, a lot of that stuff is part of the prohibited concepts. But of course, prohibited concepts law didn't deal with suicide. It didn't deal with pornography. Um, and uh, with the transgenderism, uh, these are all part of a dangerous agenda coming from the political left. Uh, it has Marxist roots. It's about destroying our society and our children in the process. Well, talk a little bit about the course that you're developing uh, for school board members. If you're out there uh, and if you're a school board member, we had uh, a, a couple of school board members at our Tennessee Freedom Summit. I'm in correspondence with tons of them all across the state. Uh, if you are a school board member or if you know one, by all means, forward this interview to them. 
talk a little bit about uh, the curriculum that you're putting uh, together for school board members so you can uh, help them be clear on these concepts. Well, we have a course that will be advertised as early uh, as next week. And I believe the uh, date of the course will be November 1st. It'll be here in Nashville. And it will be through my organization, uh, Carol Swain's Real Unity Training Solutions. And if you're interested in learning about the organization, you go to unitytrainingsolutions.com. Uh, uh, and uh, that um, uh, landing page, it will be possible to register for the course. And Mich Michelle Harper is the director of operations for the company. And she has an extensive background in K through 12 education. She has a PhD in that. And we also have a, a, a Zell Dalden, an attorney working with us. And we have other you know, PhDs and attorneys um, at our disposal. But we have designed a course for Tennesseans to train school board members about everything they need to know about the prohibited concepts but also how they sh uh, re show up. They don't show up announcing I'm CRT and I'm a violation of the law. Uh, when young men, males and boys are targeted because they are males and boys and men, that's a violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and its um, amendments are uh, the same with uh, white people. When white people are targeted because they are white people and told that they are uh, uh, inferior, that they are responsible for all the evil in the world, uh, that they should be silent, uh, that um, they uh, they have blood guilt. That's a violation of the Civil Rights uh, Act. It's a violation of the law. And parents have rights. And so one of the things that you will get out of our courses, uh, you will learn about this law, the new law. You will learn how and where it manifests itself. And you'll learn techniques about, you know, how to combat it and how you would approach uh, as a school board member, uh, your fellow school board members, as well as, uh, you know, superintendents and schools. You'll understand curricula and you would know what to look for because a lot of these programs uh, come disguised. Well, the devil's not lazy. No, uh, not say at what all. you want to. He takes the same old tricks and... Uh, if he can redefine uh, racism or sexism and package it up and and take it from, you know, as soon as everybody figures out that one group's been oppressed, it's like, huh, well, let's just turn it around the other way. And maybe nobody will notice. And the sad thing is uh, what we don't learn from history, we learn from history and we just fall for the same old tricks over and over again. Um, pivoting to, more, a little go bit ahead. more. The, the course, our course um, is all about this Tennessee's prohibitive um, concepts law, TCA 49-6-1019. And every school board member who participates will get credits. And this um, it will fulfill the credits towards that state training. And so we need to really celebrate the fact that um, we applied, went through a process that had many different layers and were approved. And so we can offer this uh, to Tennesseans who really want to comply with the law, they want to understand the law, and uh, they care about our nation and care about our children. So I think that we should applaud what has happened as a great success. And so our first training program will be November 1st. And we need people out there, um, you know, to tell your school board secretary, you know, that you want to take the course, uh, get help registering, and, um, and and contact us and we give you information about where the class is going to be held. And if you are traveling to Nashville, um, the course is actually going to be held in Brentwood, um, which is kind of like a suburb of Nashville. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, we can help you with all of your needs. Well, uh, if you're watching this, guys, let me give you a little action item here. Uh, you will probably see this in the email subject line or in the body of the email that this interview goes out in. You may be watching this on social media. You may be listening to it on the podcast. Forward this interview, uh, social post, or email to your personal school board member. Uh, everybody knows that there are a handful of conservatives on every school board. In some of these counties, it's a majority conservative makeup. Uh, so please do, as an action item, uh, Tennessee conservative subscribers, just forward this 
this, however the communication lands on your ears or eyeballs, forward it right to your school board members and say, hey, check this out. Is this something you'd like to attend? Uh, that might be helpful. Guys, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to thank all of you. Uh, we got some checks this week. Not a bunch, but I'm telling you, every check helps us. When you're, when you're as thinly funded as we are, uh, every check helps. Tennessee Conservative, you can mail those to 1523 East 27th Street if this place hasn't been carried off by a flood. Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. You know, get your pen and your paper out. Uh, write us an old-fashioned check. I read all the notes. I appreciate it. I respond by mail. And when you give anything, we will send you this Don't California, My Tennessee bumper sticker, this Proud Tennessee conservative bumper sticker. If you give $50 or more or a $10 recurring donation or more, we will send you this Proud Tennessee conservative tumbler. This is about to be a vintage tumbler, a collector's item, because we're going to change this up a little bit here soon. We're, we're, we got a, a little, a few more. Pivoting to another topic, um, I'd like to ask your general thoughts on school choice um, in Tennessee, you know, uh, the governor promised school choice uh, when he ran, and uh, we had school choice for less than 1% of Tennesseans. All the school choice legislation failed in the General Assembly uh, at the hands of, of rhinos, not Democrats. And uh, we had no support uh, from leadership on school choice this legislative session. Our kids can't read and write. Only a third of them can read at grade level. All the other subjects are almost identically the same. Right. And it's violence. I grew up with a dad that couldn't read or write, and yeah. we are turning out functionally illiterate children. We are. And just destroying households. That's my bias. Uh, but tell me what you've seen, because you, you're far more informed about what's going on in the rest of the nation. Uh, what's the what's the climate for school choice right now? And and what are you seeing abroad? And then, or not abroad, it's in other states. And then what are you seeing? And well, what are your thoughts here in Tennessee? Well, I mean, I think that we are at a particular moment where parents all across America, and don't think just in terms of conservatives, because uh, this is in many ways, it's nonpartisan. People love their children and whether they're Democrats or Republicans, they know that the school system has failed. And if you look at the homeschool and the people that are pulling their children out of, uh, out of uh, public schools, it skyrocketed with Hispanic and Black parents leading the way. And so that speaks volumes. And across the country, I think the moment is ripe for uh, parental rights and school choice. And it's a disgrace that Tennessee, a red state of all states, doesn't have school choice. And it's unfortunate that because we are a red state, that there are so many people that are not ideologically conservative, they're not value-based, they have gone into the Republican Party. They've run under the Republican Republican umbrella, and they uh, are not principled people. Uh, I hate to say that, but they're not. And so they are, uh, you know, the rhinos that are willing to compromise. And at the end of the day, they don't share our Judeo-Christian values and principles that uh, undergirded this nation. And as a consequence, they're willing to agree to just about anything. And so Tennessee needs uh, school choice. They need uh, stronger parental rights. Uh, parents need to be encouraged because you have a lot of allies that cut across race, political party, and religion. And so make sure you forge those broad coalitions. And I also uh, will make a pitch for my book, Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House, because it really explains, you know, the critical race theory and how it appears, how it manifests itself. Because again, it doesn't come with a trumpet saying, I'm critical race theory. It comes disguised uh, as action civics and uh, as culturally sensitive learning and as, as all sorts of things. And so my, the short book, Black Eye for America, has two chapters on how to fight back. And you can't fight back unless you're educated. You have to know what you're dealing with. And then you have to know your legal rights, uh, your civil rights, your constitutional rights. And civil rights are not just for racial and ethnic minorities, they're for every American. So two chapters on how to fight back. There's a glossary. There are all sorts of resources, organizations that you can turn to. And so I would encourage uh, people that are interested to get the book, the whole book with the citations, the glossary and all of that 
is probably under 150 pages. I don't remember the exact number of pages, but you can read it very quickly and you can set up a small group. There's study questions at the end and, uh, and that will help you be better informed. We do have a battle and we have to fight, not just for our children. You may have pulled your children out and put them in a, a, a private school that you know is, hasn't been taken over, or you may be homeschooling, you're paying taxes. You need to fight for everyone's child. Absolutely. I completely agree. Dr. Swain, you've been very kind with your time. I'll give you the last word. And if you would mention that website once more where people can learn more about this upcoming training in November. It's unitytrainingsolutions.com. And, uh, or you could also Google Carol Swain's real Unity Training Solutions. And we will be uh, sending out emails. And I think that we will have a link on uh uh, Brandon, your website where people can uh, click on it and uh, and register for the course. And I believe that we can um, turn things around when it comes to education, but also when it comes to the state. And we can no longer tolerate rhino politicians because our nation is at a critical point. Uh, America is teetering on the edge of a precipice. And sometimes it seems like it's already fallen over and we just don't realize it. Well, I hope that we can keep fighting. Uh, all we have to do is hold our elected officials accountable to do the right thing. Uh, I will uh, close in this. It was uh, satisfied me to see that nine out of the 10 uh, teachers union endorsed Republicans lost their primaries. And so Amen. I believe <laughs> slowly but surely that organization has become so tainted. Uh, I think that that maybe at some point but through superstition or principle, whichever works, uh, Republicans will quit taking money from these organizations, but I doubt it. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, corruption, Tennessee, I, I'm sorry, it's very corrupt, whether we're talking about Democrats or Republicans, we see the corruption. But uh, there are principled men and women, and uh, I would encourage them, if you feel in your spirit that you should run for office and you know you really don't want to, none of us wants to be a politician. So I can tell you, you don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be a politician, but you can be a statesman or a stateswoman and go out there and serve and fight for your country. You know, we need principled people in every position, at every level of government. And so at some point, if we keep uh, fighting, we can have a critical mass. And so I encourage you all, don't give up. Be encouraged. It's not over yet. Well, amen, Dr. Swain. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. here. I'm Brandon Lewis with the Tennessee Conservative News. If you like interviews like this, please do go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com, hit that subscribe button, or search for Tennessee Conservative anywhere you get your podcasts or social media while they still let us broadcast. Until next time, I'm BL signing off. Thank you.